Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and today we're going to be talking about game development laptops. Now, every couple of years, basically to keep pace with changes in technology, I do an updated guide on picking out a laptop for game development. The last one I did was back in October of 2021, and at that point in time, I didn't actually need a laptop, but I did make a number of recommendations, and since then, I have picked up a laptop, and this is going to be what I bought and why. Now, if we go through this recommendation, I try to do, again, these to keep up with, there's changes in GPUs, CPUs, and then kind of game development technologies. Most recent things were things like RTX or virtual reality support. So if you want to support those things, I cover what your particular needs are. So here we go through a rundown. I stick it to um, say five, six pounds or less. I want portability in my machine. So none of the 17 or 19 inch machines are covered here. And here were some of my responses. I'll go through, do some recommendations. I do like a high end, a mid end, and kind of a more affordable machine kind of suggestions here. And I have a few other recommendations recommendations in there as well. Now, interestingly enough, when I did this back in October, literally like a week later, the MacBook Pros were released. And for the first time in ages, they actually made a bit of sense for game development. I've covered them pretty extensively on my channel. I picked up a MacBook Pro. I do like the machine. I would never recommend it as your primary game development laptop, but it is a good solid machine and it is capable of doing a lot of game development tasks. But when it came to the end of the recommendations here, my recommendations were, well, it turns out a lie. <laughs> so at the end, I said, if I could get more RAM, I would have probably gotten a Razer Blade 14 or Razer Book 14 or Razer Studio 14, whatever the heck they call their 14 inch model. The problem with that machine, which is pure AMD, AMD GPU, AMD CPU, is they fixed it and hard capped it to 16 gigabytes of RAM. I don't think 16 gigabytes of RAM is, well, I don't think it's enough for today, to be honest, but I definitely don't think it's future proof. So that is disqualifying there. Uh, I currently have a Razer Blade 15 advanced from 2019. And that machine has served me well with two exceptions. And the reason I did not get a Razer Blade advanced again are twofold. First off, Razer have increased their prices and their pricing sucks. Second, Razer support is trash. And then that second one is important because in this machine, which I have owned for three years, I am now required to replace the battery for the second time time. And I do the battery replacements myself because Razer support sucks. Now, the problem with Razer Blade laptops, and I've run into this now with everyone I've ever bought, they just can't handle the heat over time. And the problem is the batteries warp. It's just a very common known issue with Razer Blade laptops. If you have a Razer Blade and you're having trouble clicking your trackpad, almost guaranteed it is because your battery is overheating and is actually warped now and pushing against the bottom of your trackpad. It's something that happens. They need to update the case, the design. They've been using that same chassis for, uh, I think, five or six years now, and it just can't handle the thermals of modern hardware. And things have gotten hotter since then. So personally, ain't going to touch Razer, at least until they update that chassis. So what I recommended back in this guide, and I recommend now, uh, was a Zephyrus 15. And a Zephyrus 15 got a lot of things right. It's a very interesting machine, and I didn't buy one. And I'm going to explain why I didn't buy one in a few minutes, and I would still actually fully recommend this machine. The interesting thing with a Zephyrus 15 is they have AMD as uh, the CPUs, and what that generally means is you get very good battery life. What I picked does not have great battery life. Just one of those things to be aware of. There's a couple of other things that happen with this generation I'm kind of interested in. Another big difference is so that it's got a QHD 240 hertz, three millisecond uh, display on it, which is quite nice for gaming. Uh, maybe a little bit less so for game development. We'll get back to that in just a second. Another thing I like is 100 watt charging off of USB. Um, it's a nice design. I like the chassis here. I like the battery life for sure, but I ultimately didn't get it because I got this. Now this is the Zephyrus 16 and you may be thinking, okay, well that looks a whole lot like the 15 and yeah, the G15 and the M16 have identical chassis, the exact same chassis. So what is different? Well, the big thing here, see this, see this bezel right here. See, no bezel right here. That is the number one biggest difference is it uses a 16 to 10 display instead of a 16 to 9. Now, 16 to 9 is nice because that is your standard 1080p and 4K resolution. And that's what most games are written for. So if you're buying this as a gamer first, that is a good pickup. What I like with this display, though, as a creator, more screen real estate. Uh, you have about 50% better brightness. You have better color recreation. Just basically, it is a better screen. 
but it's also limited to 165 hertz. So if gaming is your thing, you may want to go that route. I'm I'm not actually that much of a gamer, to be honest. I'm more into the creation side of things. And 165 hertz, in my humble opinion, is more than enough resolution for the majority of people. There are downsides to this machine to go with the upsides. Now, the downside, the biggest downside, if you care about portability and battery life, buy the G15 or the little G14, which would actually be even better because you get AMD across the board, AMD GPU, AMD CPU, and then the technology that kind of gives you better battery life by pairing the two together. That is all in the G14 level, but the AMD CPU powering this machine is much more... Uh, power efficient than the Intel processor powering the M16 that I picked up. So do be aware of that fact. 100%, this machine is actually using a 12 series Intel G, uh, CPU. Uh, and at the same time, they've got uh, 3070 Ti uh, in there. And the 3070 Ti, it's not a huge jump over the 3070, maybe a 10% increase. Probably puts you about on par with a, a previous generation 3080 in spec. Uh, but again, this display, is nice again better color space uh, more screens resolution i actually like 16 to 10 better than 16 to 9 personally uh so the display is definitely nice in that regard uh but it was ultimately this that made me choose it you get better uh if you're doing code compilation you're doing video encoding uh, that kind of stuff the intel i9 12900 uh, is actually outperforming the AMD by quite a margin. Now, again, the cost of that, the trade-off is the battery life isn't great. What I'm getting is probably about five to six hours of casual use, where you'd probably get more like seven to nine hours on the G15. Uh, so you definitely pay a price uh, when it comes to the battery life. Now, do keep in mind, once you engage the GPU on either machine, your battery life is like an hour, an hour and a half. It's, it's just the nature of the beast. Now, one of the things I did find that I like is you can use that um, external um, USB support to plug into whatever you got nearby and kind of top it up. So you can actually uh, plug into an external battery and make it last a little bit longer. So uh, either way, definitely nice. Also, the uh, SSD speed in the M16 is better than what you get in the G15. And one huge advantage to both of these machines over the 2021 models is there is now a MUX switch. And I will not go back to a world without a MUX switch. And you may wonder, okay, what is a MUX switch? Well, this is becoming pretty standard in 2021. Some 20, sorry, 2022, some 2021 models started getting MUX switches, but before that, it wasn't too common. And what a MUX switch basically allows you to do is bypass the CPU. A lot of this laptop CPUs, the GPU still passes through the CPU. This is a technology called Optimus. Um, and, and it's, it definitely got some advantages to it, but it also has a performance overhead. So even if you're purely using the GPU, your GPU still had to talk to the CPU to get to uh, the display. What a MUX switch does is basically bypasses that entirely. So you're running as if you had a dedicated GPU like you were on a desktop. This can result into, uh, they're saying, uh, a direct GPU mode reduces latency and boosts performance by an average of 9%. It's a pretty solid upgrade. Now do keep in mind, when you have the MUX switch enabled, it is uh, a battery draining, like it, it you're just all of your power savings gpu side of things are gone but if you're plugged in and trying to get the best performance out of it you've got that option now and this is a nice thing not to mention when you're working in the world of game development trying to just get some programs to run on your gpu when you have a, a, like basically almost all laptops have essentially two gpus now right you have the integrated uh, intel in in this case z graphics or the rdna on the amd side and then you have your special gpu side of things well if you get stuck running Running on the integrated because the software wasn't written right, it can kill you. Well, this basically can you can get rid of one of the virtual GPUs. The integrated GPU in your machine is effectively gone when you use a MUX switch. It's a very nice, um, just peace of mind kind of feature, and it gets you up to nine percent performance boost. So that is definitely a very nice aspect of this. Now I got to tell you, there are definitely some downsides to this. And if you go with the M16, I do need you to be aware of two things. First off, um, the uh, this machine, the, this, the, this color is really the only option available. It's sort of this rubberized matte black, which I actually find really sharp. And if this was going to be an accurate um, actual shot of what it looked like, there would be 700 little fingerprints over here. There would be a palm mark over here, a palm mark over here, fingerprints all over here. Literally, when I pulled this out of the box, it was just covered in fingerprints. So do be aware of that. If you are uh, obsessive about the look of your machine, you literally can't keep this machine clean. It's not a matter 
or me being filthy or anything like that. It is just the worst fingerprint magnet I have literally ever seen. Like literally the worst. I have never seen a machine more prone to fingerprints in terms of a, a laptop than this thing is. So do be aware of that. And then we're going to get to the other flaw. And this is definitely one of those things to be aware of. This here is the Zephyrus uh, ammo crate. This is the control system for uh, thermals and so on. So right now I am in Windows mode and you probably can't hear too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over here to turbo mode. Now I'm actually doing a pretty solid amount right now. Like my, my CPUs are spinning at 3400 RPM right now. The GPU is going because of my um, the video encoding going on right now. But what I'm going to do is say, okay, unleash the hounds. Let's go to turbo mode. And if you are noise sensitive, uh, just do be aware this uh, this can get pretty ugly. So if you can hear that in the background, I'm going to redirect the mic towards my machine. Do you hear that? Yeah. So, uh, all right. So let's go back to uh, the Windows profile over here and uh, give it a second to uh, realize that it's changed. All right, they're finally spinning down. So if you care about noise and volume, just know if you want to get the most out of this machine, you're going to have to put it on super fast spinny fan mode and super fast spinny fan mode is loud. Now the G15 apparently is fairly loud, but not quite as much. I guess it's five to 10% like quieter at the same spec. Uh, there is the option of doing uh, manual fan curves, but apparently Armory Crate's kind of broken right now. So eventually once this works right and we can control the fans nicely, uh, it will be in a much better place. But as it stands right now, it is definitely a loud machine when you are fully taking advantage of it. So uh, for most people, it's not going to matter. Uh, but if you're gaming and you hate the sound of fans, or let's say you're trying to demonstrate a game engine on your YouTube channel, you may get a bit of a background hiss noise, unfortunately. And that's the nature of the beast. But it is a trade-off. And working in all those other profile modes, I tend to still get quite nice um, speed. And you have the option of making it faster at the cost of noise and at the same time i would rather that it has good cooling uh and bad noise option than bad cooling uh, you know in a machine that's going to die but that is just definitely one of those things to be aware of with this machine it is a fingerprint magnet it does not have the greatest battery life in the universe and it is loud when you're using it in performance mode so uh if i was going to buy today would i buy a zephyrus g15 probably not to be honest because the 20 uh, 21 models were just about just as good. The things that you are giving up is the TI, and the TI is not a huge upgrade for the most part over the, the 3070. And you can pick up the 2021 models of the G15 for basically about 50% cheaper, which is definitely the way I would go. Now, would I get an M16 from 2021? Hell no. Not at all. In 2021, I would have bought the G15 over the M16 every day of the week. And why is that? Well, that's because the Intel Tiger Lake i9, I uh, the 11900 sucked. So there was a huge upgrade to the 12900 from the 11900. Whereas in the AMD world, I actually don't even think the chip got upgraded, to be honest. But even if it did, it was a very uh, incremental upgrade. Whereas when it comes to the world of Intel, this chip was bad. And I wouldn't have bought a machine with it. The 12.9, good. And I did buy a machine in it. Just one of those things to be aware of. Do not buy a Zephyrus M16 from 2021, in my humble opinion. Also, you do not get that MUX switch. So if you want 9% additional GPU, and as a, again, as a game developer, I actually think that, that MUX switch is more important than you realize. Because when you have those fights and you're trying to figure out, is this using my CPU or is it using my GPU? And that is a fight I have way more often than I want to admit. The MUX switch gets rid of that, and I love that. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is ultimately what I bought. So, if you want to see the guide, it's still pretty applicable at this day and age. Uh, from the 2021 models, uh, I said I'd get a 15, and I ended up getting the M16. Both are really solid choices. Basically, you decide, do I want to have portability and better battery life? If so, I would still recommend the G15. If I don't really care that much about battery life, um, you know, beyond, you know, I could get five or six hours of surfing and mild juice or whatever, which is solid. Uh, but if I want like decent battery life on the go, if I want to try and do all day out and about kind of battery life, the G15 is the better pick. But if I want raw performance, the better screen, a better laptop for creators, 
it's hard to beat the M16. Just do be aware, it is an absolute finger prick magnet, and it has uh, some of the loudest fans I've ever heard in my entire life. Those are the two definite biggest negatives. Uh, but I've had this thing for a couple of weeks now. They just shipped, um, I think they're about a month old now, and I've had it for about, I think, three weeks. And I would say straight out, uh, no regrets. It's, it's a very solid, great machine. Uh, and if I did not get this, I would still pick up the G15, highly recommended. The only thing is the uh, 2021 model of the G15 is probably the better buy than the 2022 model. Whereas when it comes to the M16, get the 2022 or don't get it at all, in my humble opinion. So that is what I picked. I figured I'd at least be honest with my final decisions. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.